All right, time for the year-end video. John with a lot going on the layout, and uh, after I after I take care of the channel stuff and the layout stuff, we'll be talking about we'll be talking about uh, what's other stuff has happened in 2023. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a long section. It's a long video. If you don't want to know the update with my mom and stuff like that, don't watch it. But uh, for those who do watch, um, got some notes here on the channel. The channel I've been doing the last 28 days, uh, we have a pretty good uh, level of people who are watching the videos who aren't subbed. Only 65.5% are not subscribed. However, we have an issue. We have a little bit of an issue here. Well, 87%, 87 of you, 27.4%. Uh, have all notifications enabled? Have have selected all notifications, but only sixteen percent of you, or fifty one, have your notifications enabled. So you're not getting notifications because your settings in YouTube, you're not are to not get notifications. So if you want to get notifications, you need to change that. Uh, there's two places you need to be able to turn you need to be able to turn on to receive notifications. So that way you're notified uh, when a video is uploaded. Uh, we had 127 returning viewers, 504 unique viewers, which is up 123% over the last 28 days. Uh, five subs over the last 28 days, which is an increase of 25%. Uh, over the last 365 days, which of course is not all 23, three of the goods, a little bit of 2022, but uh, if I did that right then. This was not get out before uh, the year end. So, uh, seventy-eight percent, seventy-eight point five percent are not subscribed, while twenty-one point five are subscribed. Uh, we have twenty-five point six percent of the viewers are female, seventy-four point five are male. Uh, ten, the ten per ten point seven percent are eighteen to twenty-four. 32.5 or 25 to 34, that kind of makes sense. That is my age group. 20.3% uh, are 30 age 35 to 44. 8.6% are 45 to 54. 12% are 55 to 64. And 16% are 65 plus. Uh, views. Uh, the number one viewer of the channel... Number one viewer of the channel are males age 25 to 34 at 20.2 percent. Uh, 14.9 percent are males 65 plus. So people in my age group and then old people. Oh, that's most of the people who are model railroading are that age group, are the 65 plus age group. So, 14.3 uh, percent of males age 35 to 44. 12.3% of females age 25 to 34. I know who at least one person who is contributing to that, and that's in the personal thing. Uh, yeah, uh, don't come near me at the uh, activity train show, Summer. I know you watch the channel. 10.9% uh, of males age 55 to 64. Sparky, you need to watch my videos more because just from you alone, it should be more than that. Now, the watch time, 19.3% uh, of that is female and 80.7% is male. Uh, the people who watch my videos the longest are males age 65 plus, which is 32.1% of my watch time is males age 65 plus. Next is it drops considerably at the 25 to 34 age group at 14.7%. 55 to 64 is 13.2%. 8.8% is from males 35 to 44. 7.9% is males 45 to 54. Sparky. <laughs> Uh, 7.6% of females age 25 to 34. There we are again. Uh, in 
20, 20, in the last 365 days, we have had, the, the channel has had 29,064 views, which is up 61% from the last 365 days. We had 1,001.1K 1, 1 hours of watch time, at up 109% from last 365 days. We had an increase of 121 subs, which is up 75%. For the lifetime, the channel has had 58,670 views, 2.1 thousand hours of watch time, and I've uploaded 75 videos in that time. That is definitely an increase in, that is definitely an increase. The channel is finally growing. Uh, last time I checked, I had 319 subscribers. Uh, so that's good. Uh, We'll go into 2024. I mean, 2023, it was it was rough. Personal things, plus I had some videos that didn't perform well, and I was just I just couldn't take it anymore, so I quit for a while. Then I started doing uh, the I wanted to document the stuff that was disappearing, like we had the uh, videos on the RK Natica replacing their power. I need to get out back out there because now one one now Arcade Natica one fourteen is uh, lettered for Arcade Natica and has one fourteen on it like the the DNH had their numbers on the long hood. Uh, I need to get out there and film it again, but I just haven't had the opportunity to. Now let's go to the layout and we will show what's going to be going on with the layout. So look over here, uh, stuff I got. There's the DNH box car I got from. Uh, Model train stuff in their sale. The I the Indy Harbor Belt uh, bulkhead flat is down there. Uh, there's here's the Washington Central gondolas. Still haven't gotten those in the layout. JMRI hasn't put them on. Uh, there's my DCC ready SD40T-2 that I gotta get a decoder in eventually. My other stuff this Conrail locomotive, the DNH Susquehanna BNO Norfolk and Western. That was bought this year. 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 We added, added four DCC and sound locomotives this year. Did I get the Gulf Guild? Did I get the Delaware Hudson last year? I don't remember. I'm. I know that. I know I got that one this year. I think I got that one. No, that was my first Athens Genesis. So that that I got this year. That I got this year, and that I got this year. And that was the Christmas prize last year. So that was not that long before Christmas. And then another locomotive added this year at train show. And, of course, we have the DCC and No Sound mp dc that I got from Alex Rockway. So we added six locomotives to the roster this year. Uh, that's, of course, DCC ready. I got to put a decoder in that one. I had it sitting on the layout for a, to pose for a photo with the with the uh, 5742. Uh, we have at the freight depot. We have cinders down. You can tell where they're glued and where they're not. Uh, they're not glued between the rails. They will be. I was going to put uh, stuff on here. I was going to put cinders on like cardboard or stuff, but I've run these cars back and forth over and over again. They roll through. It will look better if that is just put in there loose and then secured. And I can, when I, I spray this spray with alcohol, with the 91% uh, IPA, I can run these tires back and forth and make sure that the uh, flangeways are clear over and over again. And then I can put glue on it and run them back and forth, make sure the flangeways are clear. And then... Do that. Uh, there are a lot of people who wouldn't do that. There are a lot of people that, for some reason, they make their crossings so that they don't come up high enough either, and which looks horrible. 
but uh, if if you have if you're worried about these catching, you're gonna have a problem with the switches because if they won't go if you, if your cars will not clear a crossing that uh, is up even with the railhead, then you're gonna have a problem going through them like that with a railhead crosses. So yeah, I'm not worried about it. I'll make sure that they run well, and if I have to, I can always use a use tweezers or uh, a dental pick or something to clear out the flange way. So yeah, I'm not going to do any more scenery here. I might put a little bit more cinders in there. I'm almost out of cinders. I need to get more, but that will be next year. I'll got train shows to go to. I got Batavia. I got the, uh, we have a train store that's, I think it's a new train store. It opened up in Menden. I got to get up there. Uh, I'm going to go there uh, during the Northeast Regional Convention, which is in September, because during that, they're going to have 10% off for NMRA members during, who are going to the convention. So I'll get stuff. I'll check out that store then and get what I get and get something, probably get something there then. As I got to save up as much money as I can. I got to get a saw so I can cut the wood. And I'll do that as soon as I can uh, in 2024. I can't do it this, can't do it in 2023. I just don't have the money to. I got to be able to pay taxes and stuff. So we'll get this module. We'll get, uh, I'll probably get some grass on here to cover that up because that, that's the alcohol did that to the paint. Uh We'll paint uh, this section, get the, uh, I'll make a, I'll probably make a styrofoam. I got, I can make it out of either this or I got lots of other styrofoam, a lighter density foam that the wire cutter would, the foam cutter would go through easier that I could make, uh, put the, make the platform for the depot out of that and that I'd at least have the platform there. So yeah, we'll get uh, that section of the with uh, grass in it. Uh, I'm not sure what scenery will go in here because I got to put a gas station in over there. These buildings have to be scratch built. So does the depot. Uh, that module, I probably won't get much scenery done next year, but we'll at least get the track work arranged. So in 2024, we'll have a lot of improvement. We'll see a lot more stuff added to the added to the layout for rolling stock and such. Uh, still got to fill those shells. That that stuff is going to go. The stuff that's loose that's going to go in a one of those plastic uh, drawers. I got a set downstairs that are the perfect size for those and got my bags here all ready to go to the next train show, which is Batavia. I'll be there at the NMRA booth and I'll probably be at the NMRA booth for RIT, Hemlock. I don't know what we're going to do with Hemlock because Hemlock, Hemlock is, where is the sheets? Hemlock is September 21st and 22nd, and I think those are two of the dates for the uh, NMRA convention. So I'm not quite sure what we're, for the Northeast Region Convention, so I'm not quite sure what we're going to do about Hemlock, if we're going to have a booth at Hemlock or not. Uh, so, got a lot of stuff for 2024. Now we'll go to uh, the other stuff that's been going on. Now, the other stuff. This year has been quite a roller coaster. I mean, going into 2023, I had just gotten my license. Now I've had my license for over a year now. February 4th, mom almost died. She went to Syracuse, was flown to Syracuse with carbon dioxide poisoning twice the lethal limit. 
and for the first time I was thrust into being alone. And I had a short stint of being alone a few years ago when my mom had uh, multiple blood clot, had trouble breathing and ended up having multiple blood clots in both lungs from breathing super cold air while we were working one day. She got frostbite in her lungs and it caused bleeding and she ended up being in the hospital for a while. I think it was a week that I was on my own. But this was a time that I, it was a very real possibility that I might be alone forever. I mean, I've talked in previous videos about the PTSD that has made me scared of females. So the possibility of a relationship was happening didn't exist doesn't didn't exist so i would be alone and i was thrust into starting from taking care of absolutely nothing other than i did dishes and i cooked to having to take care of everything having to change bills over into my name and figure out the way I could pay bills that my mom paid by sending money in when I don't have a checking account. And while doing all this, while not knowing if she was going to live or die, and that was a horrific first few months as her life was threatened three times, first from the carbon monoxide poisoning, then she recovered almost completely, and then all of a sudden started not being able to talk, not being able to walk, not being able to eat, and then doctors wanting to pull her feeding tube, and then uh, after she was sent to the hospital because the nursing home neglected her, and she developed blood clots in one le in one of her legs, and it was purple and cold. And they avoided her getting a stroke, but then they wanted to pull her feeding tube, her nasal feeding tube, and uh, let her die after I think a month or two of her. It was only one month uh, of her being uh, from from the carbon monoxide poisoning, when they say a year or more. They shouldn't even consider the, that option until a year has gone by. And to her being transferred to the Murray Village Green, where she is now, and the first, the second day that she was there, and the whole time she was at Unity Hospital in Rochester, I couldn't visit her because I was out of the car for a month. And then she tried to talk it for her second day at the area village green and it was she quickly gained the ability to talk and her mind slowly came back and during that time i was made incredibly uncomfortable and also during this time the girl who caused my ptsd who was flirting at me for a year and a half in Warsaw Walmart when she was working while she had a boyfriend. She cheats that she it was told by one of her by one of her friends that she she has cheated in every boyfriend she's ever had, so that's not surprising. Uh, after she went to the cops and told them that I was stalking her and all this stuff. And it made me scared to even leave my house. I couldn't go. I couldn't go into stores again. That was another thing I had to get. I had to overcome was the paralyzing fear of going into stores. And to this day, I do not go through. If I can avoid it, I will not. If I will not go through a register where a there is a female working under the age of at least fifty. 
Uh, there have been a couple times that I had to go through younger register, but I have to I keep I have to take an hydroxyzine after after that because I am so scared of them. And that is something that will never change, especially after what one of the CNAs at Leroy Village Green did to me. Uh, while at Leroy Village Green, while my, my visiting mom at Leroy Village Green, all of a sudden one of the girls started acting interested in me. And this girl's 18 years old, and I'm, thir I'm, I'm 31 now. I was 30 at the time. And I was ex very uncomfortable with the age difference because I had a strict I've had a strict rule all my life from 18 and when 18, well, it was, when I was 18, it was five years older and none younger, to eventually when I was 25, it, five years older or younger, no more than that. Uh, and this girl was 12 years younger than me. That's over twice my age requirement, and that's almost half my age. That's as close to half as half my age as you can get without it being illegal. This girl is practically a child. She just graduated high school two months before she started before she really started showing interest in me. And I literally asked my counselor and his wife for advice on how to reject this girl. And they told me not to. So did the six other people I told about her behavior. And this girl actually said in the corridor of the nursing home where I could hear her to one of her coworkers that she wished I would notice her. The coworker says, well, maybe someday he will. And after that, she actually had her parents sitting out front of the facility watching me as I came in while she waited in the reception area and stood there at the window until I came in, and then she went out and talked to her parents, and then she came in a couple minutes later. Uh, one of her coworkers told one of the resident's daughters that this girl was upset that I was ignoring her signals. It's like, I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to, and then I'm scared to death to approach girls as it is. I was sad that. For a while, I had to take on hydroxyzine almost every time I left the facility because I was so scared of the girls that were working there. And this girl ended up being the first girl I had spoken to in four years without having a panic attack. But I still was not going to pursue anything with somebody that young. If she wanted that, she would have to pursue me. And that was exactly what every single person that I talked to about the situation said that yes, she should definitely, the age difference, she should definitely be the one to do the pursuing. And that does not include uh, standing next to me while I'm telling one of the other people how one of the residents fell, staring up at me like a, like a bride looks at the groom in their wedding. And yes, she actually did that. That's the best way I can describe that look that she was giving me. Uh, and then she decided to go to a rave. And that is not something I want to be in. Anything part of that type of girl who goes to those things, I don't want anything to do with. And... When I was in the fire department, I responded to a call where a 16-year-old girl had overdosed. Two years after that call, that girl, who was exactly, the, almost exactly, who was, would have been, well, this girl, the CNA, would be exactly, this, almost exactly the same age as that girl who died, overdosed. The girl who overdosed died. She, the girl died and she was 18, not that long after graduation. Uh, it was a, well, a few months after graduation, I think. But she was she was 18 years old. Been 18 for a while, so she would have been about the same age as the CNA was. And I did approach, and I and because of that, I was out of concern for her life. I did approach her. 
sort of. As much of an approach as I felt comfortable with. And she threatened me. So I cannot go to see my mom because I am scared to death of her and the coworkers there. I complained about her behavior because what she was doing was inappropriate if she's going to threaten the person that she's behaving that way towards. And I wanted her fired and they didn't fire her. So that makes that facility unsafe and any other facility like it unsafe for me to go to. And that is something that will never change. And my mom is upset that I not coming to see her. She says she th says that I could come to see her if I wanted to. No, I can't. I can't. I cannot do that. I feel like my life is in danger going there. And that will never change. And they're going to move her to another facility, but I won't be able to visit her there because it's the same thing. I will not be able to feel safe in such a facility. And there's no way that she can come home right now. There's too much to work be done in the house because when we moved in here, we didn't unpack stuff. We have, we have furniture and boxes all over the place because we didn't have, we weren't in a hurry to unpack. It's We were going to be here forever. We didn't know no idea that this was going to happen. And so I have to go through stuff that should would take two people to go through and figure out where to put it alone. And that's taking a long time because it, you get you get to the point and you just it just like working in the model railroad you get to a point and you feel overwhelmed and you don't want to do any more uh now that i don't have an issue with the model railroad doing that uh it which is why uh the only thing that caught, that slows up progress on this is not having the money to do things but uh 2024 is going to is going to hopefully change that and uh, I crunch the numbers and I will be able, I have, there are, let's see, I have nine locomotives now. I bought six look, six new locomotives in 2023. And I will, I crunch the numbers and the total, total, all the locomotives on my Yankee Dabbler wish list total under $6,800. I should, if they are in stock, if they are in stock all through 2024, I should be able to buy all of those locomotives. And there are, let's see, 27 locomotives on my Yankee Dabbler wish list that are Atlas, Athern, and Rapido. And I should, if they still need to stay in stock, of course, they probably will, probably some of them will sell out. Uh, there's some that are more higher priority than others, but if they manage, if nobody buys those locomotives, I will be able to get all of them in 2024 and still be able to afford to buy things at train shows. So 2024 is hopefully will end up being better than 2023. But, uh, and I, and going back to my mom, I can't even talk to her now. Because I had to disconnect her phone because she was calling me and other people multiple times in an hour. She would call, it would connect, and she would hang up. Call, connect, hang up. Call, connect, hang up. Over and over again. So fast that when I woke up, I went to bed one night. This was a while ago now because her phone's been disconnected for over a week. And I had her blocked before then. I had let her block before the RIT train show. Uh, this is before the RIT train show. She called when I was going to sleep. I hit ignore, and she called again. It's a, I send the phone to, to call the voicemail. Obviously, I cannot answer, and she just calls again. So I, I ignore again, and as I'm setting the, I'm turning off the ringer on my phone. She calls again, and it's like. I went to sleep. She, uh, uh, when I woke up, the phone was popping up. Incoming call, mom. Disappearing. Incoming call, mom. Disappearing. She was doing that. Calling. Connect. Hang up. Call. Connect. Hang up. She finally stopped it. When she finally stopped, I called her back. And on the phone with her, 
I look and she had called me 201 times in one hour, 60 minutes, 201 times in 60 minutes. There were some times that there'd be a couple minutes between them, and other times there'd be eight calls in one minute. After that, I blocked her number. I unblocked it in the way after RIT. Then at R then at RIT, she was calling. She was doing it again. She was calling me. Okay, my phone uh, ran out of space. I'm not quite sure why. It should have three gigabytes of space in it, but whatever. And she was calling me, hang up, call me, hang up, and. Stand in the lake your booth and she's doing it. So I blocked her again. Then it was a couple days later, I unblocked her and she called me 48 times in 10 minutes. And there was a couple times that she would actually, it would actually stay connected for a minute. And I'm actually screaming into my phone, telling her to stop it. And she just, all I hear is, she's, hitting her phone screen with her finger trying to hang up and call again and hang up and call again while the phone is still connected. I had to block her number. My brother had to block her number. My my sister-in-law had to block her number. Two of our friends had to block her number. And I stopped paying on her phone. The phone's prepaid like mine is. I stopped paying on her phone because I can't have her doing that. And then she started calling people. Now she's calling people over and over again from the facility phone, which I told my brother about, and hopefully she be put an end to that. I don't know what is going on in her mind that she is doing this, but there is no way that I can have her living here when she does stuff like that, because I, I would go insane in the first 10 minutes of her being here, because she just will not stop doing things that she knows she should not be doing. I mean, there's no way that she cannot understand that what she's doing is not right. I mean, her brain had her brain to recover enough that she could text. Then she stopped texting and she won't text. And she says it's difficult for her. She started texting, texting before she could call. She can text perfectly fine. She just refuses to because she wants to bug people for no reason. When she would call me and actually talk and actually talk, she wouldn't talk. She would sit there and I would be listening to her TV for hours on end and she would occasionally ask me are you still there it's like yeah i'm still here not quite sure why then she'd start like brushing off her rollator or her pants or scratching her arm or stuff and she just it wouldn't be the scratch and itch it would be just i don't know what would cause her to scratch like this but it, it's, it's just like when she does it, when you tell her to stop, it's almost, it's more like she's doing it deliberately to annoy you. And I can't live with that. I can't live with that. I, it would drive me insane. And after that girl threatening me, after I had gotten comfortable around her enough to speak to her without feeling like she was going to kill me. And then she threatens me, knowing full well, because she knew what I had been through enough to know. I mean, she knew that she was the first girl I'd spoken to in four years without having a panic attack. So therefore, that makes her threat intentional. She intended to cause harm, which is absolutely disgusting. Uh, so 2024, I'm going to be living here alone. 2025, I'm going to be living here alone. Unless my mom makes some miraculous recovery in her, recovery in her brain, makes some, has a major breakthrough where she realizes that doing what she's doing now is not appropriate. And she sent me a letter that she had written back before Thanksgiving. I'm not quite sure why she sent it now. <clears throat> Stating that nobody cares about what I've been through. It's like, well... And which is not true. The people that I've spoken to, that I spoke to about how this CNA was acting, about I, the cop uh, who I called when uh, <clears throat> the girl from Walmart 
deliberately walked by me on Main Street, uh, Main Street, Warsaw. Those people, they do care. It's only her that doesn't care. And people who are heartless. She, through the whole time, she never could un would understand how I felt. She never did. She just said, well, she doesn't work there anymore. You can go in there. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's the other people there. It's the people that she was associated with. The people that I saw her interacting with every single day I went in there about what she did. And it's the same with the Erie Village Green. It's not only the CNA who had her parents sitting out front of the facility watching me walk in while she waited in the reception area. And the countless times that after one of the other girl, after one of the nurses said to her, well, I haven't seen you in dress and makeup yet. This girl started wearing a makeup every single time I was there. And then after about a month of that, it was less than a month, it was a couple of weeks, a week or so, a week or two of that without it doing anything, she started having her hair down for the first hour I was there. And that's not a coincidence because there were a couple times that she had it up when I got there when she saw me. Next time I saw her, her hair was down, and then an hour later it was back up. So yeah. Uh girl doing that stuff and then threatening me? No, there's no way I can go near there. And I mean her it's her coworkers I overheard talking about her interest in me. And then she threatens me. That's that's a situation that is as far as I'm concerned. And no one will ever convince me otherwise. She intended to do this all along. She, her intent the whole time was malicious. They as far and that, and I'll never believe anything else. I can't believe anything else because I have to protect myself. My mom does not understand that, and she never will. I mean, she didn't understand that when her mind was fully functional. Now that it's to the point where she is thinking that she should be calling people over and over again, it's not. So I don't know. I don't know in, with her what 2024 or 24 will bring. I know somebody reported me to Adult Protective Services saying I was a threat to my uh, thing. I was in danger. I think that was a CNA because mom says it was my brother. My brother would have no reason to do that. He would just contact me himself. He would have just texted me himself. He wouldn't have called Adult Protective Services and done that. Uh, so... Uh, Hopefully in 2024, won't have any interactions with either of either of those girls. Uh, the one from Walmart is unfortunately a viewer in the channel because she showed up to the Batavia train show. And the only this girl, this girl is not a trained person. The only reason she would be at that train show was to uh, stalk me. And uh, yeah. And my analytics, I mean, you went through my analytics, and she's 26 years old. She's a female, and she's 26 years old. So, yeah. Uh, I know she watches the channel. At least she did throughout this year. Next year, we'll have to see what the analytics do to see if she's still watching. But she probably is. And the what the analytics show would show that she is watching the at least the videos where i am on camera which means she'll watch this one if she's still watching and there is analytics that show that an eight that a girl aged 18 to 24 has started watching the channel recently because those weren't those analytics did not show any females before this uh happened with the nursing home and it was a couple it was a week or two ago that uh they started showing uh and someone in the CNA's age group watching the channel. So she might be starting to watch the channel. Which is just wonderful. I can't stop them from watching, but uh, luckily uh, every train show has security. So if uh, one of them shows up to the train show, uh, I can have security escort them out of the building. 
because I will be working booths this time. From going forward, I'll be working the Tabia train show. I will most likely be working RIT. Hemlock, I don't know what's going to happen with that because that is the same dates as the Northeast Convention. And I'm going to be at the Northeast Convention. I don't know what's going to... I'm, if I have to take off that week of work, I will. I mean, I can definitely afford it. So, uh... We'll be hopefully getting a whole bunch of locomotives in 2024, more rolling stock. We'll be getting a saw, get this uh, layout done. But uh, yeah, a lot of stuff going on in 2024. 2023 has been one, one, one wild ride. Probably come up with a new merch design for 2024. Uh, I'll probably be going along with what I already have available because I, I want to get more of that out. I don't want to. Uh, more of that available. So remember to uh, you made it this far, order some merch. Even if you're an enemy of mine, order some merch. I don't care what you do with it. Uh, we only had two cups sold. I bought my mom a shirt one of my pre one of the premium uh, women's tees for my mom that's going to be here January 4th the, the 8th so um CP source remains mile post 360 identical selling southern to your line keep on loading trains dim out